Hello chaps and chapesses, and today we're going to take a look at the new Hardy Zane carbon flywheel. For those of you who have watched this channel as we've been going along, you will know that I got a little bit of a penchant for new reels. Well, I suppose that's probably a little bit of an understatement. But it has been a while since Hardy's produced a new saltwater reel. Saltwater has always been a very long-standing passion of mine. I do a lot of saltwater fly fishing, although recently not as much as I would have liked, which is a bit sad. However, this new reel came out last year, this is the Hardy Zane Carbon Fly Reel and this is going to be a replacement for the old Hardy SDSL Fly Reel which I was using quite substantially up to that point. So the Hardy SDSL Reel has been a really good gap in the market in the fact that it's really quite a reasonably priced saltwater fly reel. So I was a little bit nervous when they said they were going to replace it until they produced this. Now this is a very different kettle of fish, if you'll excuse the expression. This is not so much a replacement for the STSL, but more of an upgrade. My first impressions of pulling it out of the box is that it's a really pretty reel. But it's a very pretty reel in a different way. It's not flash and bling like the old STSL was, which I quite liked. But this is much more gunmetal, bit of a weapon kind of reel. Now sadly, this beautiful reel has actually been sat on my desk for about six months. I've really been waiting to get a chance to take it out in the salt. I'm heading out to Providence Atoll in March and that's going to give me a real opportunity to put this through its paces and see what it's capable of. But in the meantime, before I do a long term review, I thought I'd have a quick look at it, pull it out of its box and run through some of its features so that you can see what differences that they have made in this next exciting iteration of a Hardy saltwater reel. The Hardy Fortuna has always been my benchmark saltwater reel. Either the original X series or the XDS which I currently fish with and I've always been a little bit dubious of some of the drag systems that they've built on some of the lighter weight models. But this is a very lightweight model and although it probably doesn't have the same drag capacity as the Fortuna at about 30 pounds, it does have a substantial drag from 8 to about 14 pounds in its various iterations and sizes. Now that is enough to deal with most saltwater species. So Hardys have gone back to renaming a lot of their saltwater equipment under the Zane name. So Zane Gray, a very famous saltwater fisherman from years gone by. This was always a name that was synonymous with some of the top-end Hardy saltwater fishing tackle. The carbon comes from Hardy's continued development of integrating carbon fiber into the actual structure of their reels. So a bit like the MTXS and uh, the MTX, we now have carbon integrated into the actual structure of the reel itself. The carbon fiber in the cross struts creates extra strength, tensile strength in the rigidity of the reel cage, but also as a side effect makes the reel a lot lighter. Like its forebear, the SDSL reel, this reel also has a large arbor for a quick retrieve and also a completely sealed drag system, which is paramount when fishing in the salt. As with all of Hardy's reel, it has this quick release nut which retains to attach to the spool, so it's very easy to pop the spool off. And inside, we've got a new complete drag system which is completely sealed. The drag inside is a multi-plate carbon fiber drag, so as you apply tension on the back, it is pulling 
the friction capacity of a large number, I think it's eight or nine carbon fiber drag plates together. This does mean that you can produce a large quantity of drag with not too much adjustment on the back, which is one of the things I've always really loved about Hardy's saltwater reels. As with most Hardy reels these days, the drag regulator knob moves from zero to 340 degrees, which will bring your drag settings from zero to maximum. Now I find that particularly useful. There is nothing I hate more in the salt than winding a drag continuously to try and bring it up to its max drag capacity. And I know a lot of people don't end up in a situation where they might need it at max capacity, but I do find myself in a situation in the Seychelles with bumphead parrotfish and some bigger species where I do need to be able to crank it up quickly. Now what they have done is they've made this into a diagram effect which goes through green, orange and red. Because this little red mark here, you can very, very quickly see which adjustment that you would like to have your drag set at. So if you have set yourselves, I'm fishing with 20 pound class tippet today, and I know exactly what setting this drag refers to on the 20 pound class, because I've tested it previously. I know exactly how to quickly maneuver this drag regulator in a battle, and I can put my drag to exactly where I want it to be. This precise and quick adjustment of your drag is one of the things that I've really come to love about this modern series of Hardy saltwater reels. And in fact, this system is exactly what we now find on the new UDLA reel, which means that your adjustment for tippets can be extremely precise, especially with this little click as it goes around and puts itself into each different position. As I touched on, it's a hybrid construction, so it's a cross between aluminium and carbon fiber, and that is, I think, where things are moving in the future. We've seen a lot of carbon fiber technology integrated into many different platforms that we are using these days, and actually it's only a question of time before carbon fiber becomes integrated into our fly reels. There we have tensile strength and lightweight construction. Exactly what you want in a fly reel. So a couple of things I notice as soon as I handle this reel compared to the old SDSL. To me, the anodizing on this reel, I think is of a higher quality than we saw on the STSL, which gives us this rather attractive gun metal finish, which just feels a little bit tougher. The other thing I notice is that the handle, we now have a much larger, more Fortuna-like grip on this handle, which means that it's gonna be easier to control when it's wet, and when it's spinning, and when you're on a salt flat, that's key. You need to be able to grab it quickly. I like the way that they have made the counterweight thinner as it goes around the spool, which just means that the detailing is just rather beautiful. The other thing that I noticed immediately, which I really like, is this indented regulator here. So that means that this drag knob, in normal layman's language, rather than a regulator, means that you can stick your fingers in it. Instead of having to grab it, you can just put your fingers into it and twist it easily. I really like that. It allows you to give a much better grip on that drag, which means you can have a better idea of what exactly you're adjusting during the fight. I've loaded this reel up with 80 pound uh, braid, which is my standard that I use on all my nine weight reels. This one is the 8910 model, which is the 8000, but this is my nine weight equivalent and the one that I'll be using for my nine weight rig when I'm in the Seychelles that I will use for bonefish, triggerfish, bumphead parrotfish, permit and any other of those slightly larger species that I'm going to encounter and I know that this is going to handle it. In terms of capacity I've managed to cram on there with my line winder somewhere in the region of 275 to 300 yards of 80 pound braid so I'm quite happy with that. As I said before, this reel will come in four different models. It will come in the 6000, which is for six to eight weights, which has a drag of eight pounds. That weighs in at 235 grams and costs 377 pounds. There is the 8000, which is the one I'm holding in my hand. That is for eight, nine, 10, and that uh, has a drag of 10 pounds. It weighs in at 349 grams and costs 399 pounds. Then there is the 10,000 or 10, 11, 12 equivalent. This has a drag of 12 pounds. It weighs in at 298 grams and costs 429 pounds. And then the big mama at the top, which is the 12,000, 
which is for 12 weight plus. That has a drag of 14 pounds, weighs in at 323 grams and costs 485 pounds. Yes, that's quite a lot of money, but actually in the realm of saltwater fly reels, that's really not too bad. And it is absolutely imperative that if you are fishing in saltwater, then you are going to spend your money on your reel, which is one of the most important aspects. You need a decent, smooth startup, smooth inertia, strong drag fly reel to combat those saltwater species. It's absolutely paramount. I think this is a very good looking reel. It has very different aesthetics than some of the other hardy reels I've seen before. It feels far more weapon-like, <laughs> if I'm being honest, and I quite like that. Um, I'm really looking forward to putting this through its paces uh, in the Seychelles, and then I will be able to report back to see whether it stands up to that, which I'm sure it will. I know that some of you will be very depressed about the fact that we are not, again, conducting a lab test on this reel, but I am very sad to say that the old lab in question is maybe a little bit too old to provide the drag that is required to test this reel fully. So I think he has to retire. Well, I hope you enjoyed this quick look at the Hardy Zane carbon fly reel. It's always exciting when a new fly reel, a new toy comes out. I'm looking forward to using it immensely. And as always, I hope you found that video useful. Please like and subscribe to our YouTube channel, and I'll look forward to seeing you on the next one.